Welcome back. You're watching Good Morning Kenya. This is Eye on Politics. We are just uh, dissecting the politics that characterized the weekend, talking about the political showdown between uh, Raila Odinga, the ODM leader, and the deputy president, William Ruto, each accusing each other of, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, going beyond their boundaries. Raila Odinga, on one hand, is actually poking holes on uh, the development agenda and the track record of uh, the deputy president and also questioning his style of politics. On the other side, the deputy president, William Ruto, is reading mistrust with the relationship between uh, Raila Odinga and his entry into what is now known as the handshake. And he's actually accusing uh, Raila Odinga of derailing the Jubilee Party's development agenda. So. Um, I, I've just been getting a cocktail of reactions from my panelists this morning with regards to this particular matter. I'm having advice uh, Mundalo, a governance and leadership expert, Dr. Joseph Rotich, political and economic expert. And now joining us from Mombasa via Zoom is Hamisi Mboga, a governance and leadership expert. Hamisi, I don't know what you know you say is with regards to these accusations and counter accusations between Raila Odinga and the Deputy President William Ruto. Where do you fall on this conversation? Uh, thank you very much uh, for allowing me to make some comments. These are personal observations as an expert, as an observer, as a political scientist. Uh, so take them with the salt it deserves. This is a very high period of uh, political octane. People are really geary. Uh, this BBI is a very good uh, concept, but it came at a very difficult time because it is coming very close to 2022. There's no way you can divorce BBI with, uh, 2022, and 2022 will influence, is already we are seeing, is influencing BBI. So we are in that period. And, and then two contenders, if, if you allow me, the front contenders, those people who are really uh, uh, gearing to, to present themselves for the presidents of this country, is the Honorable Raila Odinga and also uh, the Deputy President Moish, William Ruto. And they are very active politicians, these, uh, these two guys. Eh? Very, actually, they are friends. They started a long time ago. They have worked together, so they know each other. But this is the period where a politics plays its part, and politics is about interest. The interests are taking its part. So this concept of uh, blame and blame game and throwing is about tactics. It's about playing tactics so that you'll be able to get a point in a political mileage, because people are really running on this case. I can see, if, if you look at, uh, if you want to, to, to say that uh, this government has not performed, uh, Honorable Raila Odinga says, uh, I think, uh, William, you're not supporting the president to, to implement your program. And then Honorable uh, Ruto says, no, 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 you're interfering. Before you came, we were doing very well. Uh, are, you, are you reading the political scenarios uh, for, for tactical movement? So we are in that, and we shall be in that up to BBI and up to 2022. Mm -hmm. but this is the, the race has begun. But West, we are saying in, in political examination, the, the tactics are, are becoming bad because they are kind of being personalized, personalized now, right now. Because uh, when the president says, uh, uh, in court, some people don't help me, me to implement my program, and we, all, we are all reading, maybe the deputy is not supporting him. And then uh, Honorable Raila says, oh, the president says you are not supporting him to implement the program. So maybe you are a, a problem there. And then when you are a very tactical politician, he touches the president lightly, and then he says, no, it's, it's Raila. Uh, all this issue is about Raila. And the person who has really said so, uh, A, B, C, D is the president. So uh, Moshmua Ruto is, is slightly, he doesn't want to really go head on with his uh, boss, 
and uh, so if fans are targets, it must be Raila. It must be Raila who has joined it. So we are in that scenario, but let's filter. Uh, let's look at uh, the possibilities for improvement of this country. Uh, right. uh, let's prepare good political ground for anybody in future beyond uh, William Ruto and beyond the uh, Honorable Raila Odinga. Okay, I'm uh, let's prepare a situation where we shall be loving uh, co campaigns on issues. We would like to hear. There was one time earlier years when we used to observe the, the, the political platform and one let Honorable Midao, who was so tactful. In fact, when he goes to the platform, you want to hear. He has evidence, he's a content, he has an, he gives you an example you will never forget. Even that uh, example of a king is never naked, you know? Okay. He says okay. even if the king has made a mistake, don't, mm -hmm. don't say, in fact, you don't see. You are supposed not to see that the king is naked. So we All were right. using very philosophical message of platform, but now it's becoming nap to nap. And this Have is a very serious matter. Sorry to cut yes. you short. Thank you so much for your comments. And yeah, I, I like what you've said there about it's time for us to focus on issue-based politics and stop personalizing, uh, you know, the issues that are, are going around. But Dr. Rotich, I don't know whether you agree with um, Hamisi on the fact that he says what is happening between the ODM leader, Raila Odinga, and uh, the deputy president, William Ruto, is sort of tactics to earn political mileage. I concur with him so much, eh? because uh, as I said before, the two gentlemen were together and they have campaigned together on the same platform, promising Kenyans of all. When, uh, I mean, that, that is why Ruta has been saying he supported Right Honorable Raila to become the Prime Minister of this country. I know he has also done the, done the same to Uru. And here is a time that the two of them are eyeing for the 2022 presidential uh, main position. Mm -hmm. So in this case, they have to outdo one another. When, when you look at Raila when he was in Naro, he was talking about now the child who was promised a laptop in standard one or in nursery, they are now doing examination that is in standard eight because it is eight, eight years down the line. He's also talking about the stadiums which were promised to be completed within that span of time, which never happened. So in this case, when you look at the Jubilee record, as far as the developments are concerned, uh, personally, they have achieved a lot. They have achieved almost 80 percent, mm -hmm. if I have to, to, to say that. Because if he's, I mean, if right on Abraham like, can only mention laptops and the stadiums, that means the rest were done. So in this case, it was a success story. So because both of them are eyeing the 2022 uh, elections, they have to they have to soil one another. They have to correct assassinate one another. Mm -hmm. That is why you hear about oh this one is a thief, oh this one is what. All these things are politics. The other girl is not in bad blood mm -hmm. that they are saying that. But uh, now when you also ask that they have to tone down. Uh, and I want to tell you, Acheng, from now henceforth to 2022, it is just politics. There, there is, is nothing, nothing like toning nothing, down? Yeah, toning down. It's Even though when, 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 when Mukisa Kitui <laughs> arrived, huh? Even though you said you will touch we'll, that, we'll that, that, that position, yeah. he said that he will, he will initiate a different line of politics, a super politics, politics that will be in between. But you see, Kenyans are already drunk in politics. I don't know how we will make them sober again. Drunk is a strong <laughs> word, Dr. Rotich. But advice in your lenses as a governance and leadership expert, just, just, just critically look at what is happening. Is it politics or is it something that is actually um, sort of ought to inform the political conversations we are having? Do you think it's just political propaganda and drama that we are seeing in the political s s space? I think the politics of deceit has taken over this country. And uh, many a times politicians are speaking from both ends of their mouth. It is, uh, it is very unthinkable that Dr. Rotich can make mention of two projects that have not been done by Jubilee. And then he says the rest have were therefore done, done <laughs> without mentioning the rest. Pure politics of deceit. So it is, and that is exactly where uh, the deputy president is coming from. Because the deputy president has to really make a decision whether he wants to be part of the government or he wants to be an opposition leader to the government. Advice, because as you continue, also tell me how this sort of um, division is, is, is being interpreted in the public space, you know, because the, the, the deputy president has been accused of, you know, double speak for a very long time. I don't know how you interpret that. Whether exactly, and, the, and the, accusation, the accusation is true because, Cheng, you cannot, the deputy president 
At one time, he wants to tell us that the government has performed. At another time, he wants to attack the same government in which he is serving. Every reasonable leader makes a choice and chooses a struggle. When you believe that the government is not going in line with what you believe in as a leader, the best thing you do is to resign and be on the outside. But you can't keep punching the government on which you are serving and keep claiming that you are respecting the president. Because we can only have one president at a time. The country can only be under one leader at a time. And Deputy President William Ruto is, wants to be the president of this country. And when he becomes president in this country, he will be one president at a time. And he will expect that everyone who is working under him must be able to follow his vision and his dream and his aspirations for the republic. Because Kenyans will have and uh, we will have endorsed the, the, the country in his hands. Now, today the country is under the hands of President Uru Kenyatta, of which uh, Pre uh, Honorable William Ruto keeps saying that he's the principal assistant to the, uh, to the president. But do we see these assistance he's giving the president? Every other time we see him coming out and blaming <coughs> the government on one thing or the other. It is deceitful to, for the deputy president to tell us that the, 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 the <coughs> Chile government started failing when uh, Raila Odinga came in. Today the public debt that this country is struggling with is a debt that has come all the way from 2013 when, the, when William Ruto was more or less a co-president. So it is very deceitful. And the, the reason why I would believe Raila Odinga is attacking the deputy president more than he is doing to the president is because every other person believes that the DP is supposed to be helping the president achieve government agenda. And if the president's agenda for the country is the BBI, the deputy president ought to support the president in that agenda because that is then the function of a principal assistant. Advice. But if it stretches to different directions, <clears throat> then it becomes very difficult for the president to function. Advice. Not because the president is the best, uh -huh. but because in normal dictate of governance, a deputy can only help the boss. But when the deputy feels that the boss is not going the direction he wishes they went, the honorable thing is for him to resign and let us have another deputy who will be able to help the president achieve the agenda that he wants to achieve before I'm still on new advice and all seems to have been going well. That's according to the DP until the handshake. That what do you wrong. say about that? that, that, that Everything that, that, was going on smoothly until the handshake. Everything and things began to go <coughs> haywire. Before, be, before the handshake are changed, before the handshake yeah. with a very huge public debt, before the handshake, the Jubilee cracks had already started uh, being very eminent. Before the handshake, we had already seen uh, most of the, 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 the partners in the Jubilee starting to stretch on opposite directions. You look at their stories and they have done very many features and you can be, you, you hear of the stories of what happened after they won the first election before they went to the second round. They, t they, they talk of how the president had changed and uh, their approach to issues. So the issue of blaming this on the handshake is pure politics. Because what the deputy president is doing is that he has to look for a punching bag. And the right punching bag is not Uhuru Kenyatta because Uhuru Kenyatta is not a contender in the 2022 presidential election. So he knows mm -hmm. that his biggest opponent for 2022 presidential uh, contest is Honorable uh, Raila Odinga. And that is why he is insisting <laughs> on punching on Raila Odinga and Did not the president because he knows <laughs> that competition here is between him and Raila Odinga. And that's why you can see even if the BBI uh, was able to accommodate every other thing that the deputy president wrote. In fact, if the BBI was even to be written in Karen in the deputy president's <laughs> house, he will still oppose it for as long as Raila Odinga is supporting it. It's pure politics the of deceit. Of, it's, it's, words... it's politics that, that, that is unfathomable. It's politics that lacks ideals. The choice of words you guys have this morning. Punching bag. <laughs> Kenya is drunk with politics. All right. Moving on so swiftly. Now, let me allow also Hamisi to come into the conversation. Hamisi, what, what happened? There, there yes. was a time we had this, you know, let's have a national discourse. Let's talk about unity. Let's talk about building bridges. What you're seeing right now doesn't seem to be, you know, falling into place. You saw what happened in Baringo the other day. Right now you're seeing what is happening uh, in these political tours. Are we missing the point in our quest for unity in this country? Is BBI losing its, you know, sort of objective? Yes and no. Yes, because of this, a lot of a lot of debate, a lot of discussion, pro and against. 
But I don't see the discussion on what is BBI. BBI is composed of, apart from the big document, composed of nine points. Are we talking about the first point? Are we talking about security? Are we talking about decentralization of funds? Are we talking, you know, if we did that one, somebody can really judge. But somebody comes to give a general statement, a general statement, it can go either way because there must be some, some challenges that they were found in, in the way. We are informed that actually everybody was involved when he, the launch of the BBI team was composed. So what went wrong? Uh, we are coming back to that concept that uh, uh, the BBI and uh, 2022 is so close, so people will confuse the two. And I was having two proposals, very controversial proposal. One, in future, any change of the constitution should come much, much earlier, so that it is so far from the next year. People are sober on discussing on that one. And also, let's go back, if we don't change it now, in future, let's change that uh, the president is elected and he, he, he nominates a team that will work with him instead of tying the president uh, with, 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 with a partner and in, 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 in midway, they don't agree and then things are not moving. Why don't we have the governor uh, Compose a team. The president compose a team. If somebody on the way is not making uh, what we, are, we have agreed, they can be able to change. Somebody was saying it's only President uh, Uhuru that doesn't seem to have changed the, the vice. If you go back, everybody else changed the vice president when, when in the process. Start from Zay Nyata and then come to Zay Moy and come to Zay Kibaki. So he's lucky the president, if he succeeds, he will be the only president that has not changed the, the vice president. Don't we see if there's a challenge there? So those are some of the controversial issues. In future, let's have a CEO and he's given people whom he can fire and, and hire mm -hmm. and uh, account for his, his performance. This right. one is going to be very difficult. <clears throat> I love, the, other thing, the other thing that is very interesting, that's why people are, uh, are beating the deputy president in terms of what he said. I don't know where those days when they were making those promises because the president never used to say anything, but we could see that deputy president, in six months we shall have a stadium, in six months we shall have... I didn't know whether they were in the process, in the system, in the strategy, in the financing. What, what, went, what went wrong? These are political questions we're asking. All right. The promises that were given and is questioning whether there was a plan for funding, for strategy. Uh, and you're also giving very good proposals there, Hamisi. But Dr. Rutich, I don't know whether you agree the, that... The, the, there is something, uh, Cheng, that mm -hmm. I want to clarify, mm -hmm. uh, which my friend has, has kept on uh, emphasizing, oh, the, the deputy president being principal assistant to the head of state, he must have been doing APCD and that. He elaborated the other day, uh, Cheng, if you listen to the wording of the deputy president, he said that some of his activities had been given to other people, but he never complained. And he went on to say, whatever the responsibility, whatever the work that has been entrusted on him, he has always done it, and to the perfection. That is what is explained. Now, when you keep on saying that he's supposed to assist the president, yet he's a principal assistant of the head of state, he only does what he's given, then I wonder how could he have actually done. I think the biggest mistake that Uta has done in this, in, I mean, to those people who are actually attacking him, <clears throat> but when they were disarming the, head, I mean, the deputy president, I, I call him disarming because he was not given his due responsibility to play on. Now he has been on, on his own. And whatever he has done on his own, he has been, it has been an, a, a success story. And that is why it is tormenting the minds of the many who are saying that this guy, after being disarmed, he seems to be uh, scot free. He's going wayward. And, he seemed to, I mean, the, and, the, and, the, and the people are seem to be buying his ideas. That is where he has a problem. Was that what he said when he was defending his when he, when, for he, the when he defended himself, he said, mm -hmm. he said that some of the responsibilities that I used to do as the principal assistant to the head of state were given to others, yet he never complained. <laughs> All right. This, was, what I'm telling this you. was in Isiolo. And this, yes. What do you say about <laughs> that, that the, yep. the, the DP sort of like wanted to do what he's supposed to do, but you know, he just couldn't. No, the no, 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 no. This is a question for <laughs> advice. So it is, it is, it is, allow it is, advice to respond. <laughs> it is normal. People in that camp rarely follow procedure. Now, it is very obvious, 
And the only way that the deputy president can be termed to have been disarmed, as my friend Daktari puts it, is when he stops being the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. When the deputy president says what he was told to do, he finished doing it. When you're an assistant, when you finish what you've been sent to do, you sit and wait for further instruction. You don't start instructing yourself. What the DP is now doing is that he has gone on a, on, on, on a, on a rant where he has now instructed himself to start moving around the country, create a narrative, and start polarizing the country whichever way. Now, whether that is right for him or wrong is a question for another day. Because at the end of the day, he's a politician as in, and his interests must really come uh, come forth. Mm -hmm. But in his role as the Deputy President of the Republic, there is nobody who has disarmed him. And when he feels disarmed as a Deputy President, the honorable thing to do is to resign. And in fact, Cheng, as it stands today, even the President cannot be able to disarm his Deputy because they are tied to the hip constitutionally. So it is very wrong to purport that the Deputy President has been disarmed and therefore he is right to go against the President. Right. He is not right to go against the President because as it stands now, he is still living in government house in Karen, he is still moving in garment vehicle, he is still earning taxpayers' money, and therefore it is only expected and it is right that he serves the interests of the president and the government in which he's serving. And if he doesn't believe in it, it is again his constitutional right and his democratic right to get out of it, then oppose it from the outside. Now, at that time, we'll really understand where he's coming from. But for you to tell us that the government is not performing and start blaming Raila Odinga. In fact, I always feel they make Raila Odinga look so powerful because if you are the government and you're saying that Raila came and destabilized you, then how weak is that government? That it can be destabilized by a person who holds no position in that garment. Then that garment is actually supposed to go home because it's too weak to be leading Kenyans. We'll have to wait until 2022 for that decision to be made, advice. But as all this is happening, in the, uh, the background there, as the political soup is, is, it's not simmering anymore. Right now it's boiling. And if things go the way they are going, from my lenses, it will soon evaporate. Lying down below is the BBI initiative. Right now, uh, the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill of 2020 has been tabled across several county assemblies. There are calls for public participation, calls for people to read, calls for people to understand and make informed decisions. And the politics is picking up. Do we risk missing the point in this conversation? Advice and, and Dr. Rotich, I'll start with you, Dr. Rotich. <coughs> I, I think, Could uh, we miss the point? Achen, Could we just concentrate achen, on the politics achen. and miss the point with the, regards the, the, to the BBI? The process of the constitutional making is political, Achen. There is no way you can remove politics out of the real discussion of the BBI. I'm talking about the kind of politics we are witnessing right now. And uh, the, you, you see, the, the, the issue at hand is that uh, the BBI has come at a time when we are heading for the general election. That is where the problem is. So the two are just being managed concurrently. And all, all these people are actually, whatever they are doing now, they are eyeing 2022. And that is why the constitution making actually requires a sober uh, period, a sober time when people can think, can read, and digest, and give direction on what, what the PPI is all about. Can they do that if this process is politicized? At the moment, it may not be, it, the, 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 at the moment, I can be very sure that the best may not come out of it because it has been so saturated with politics. And if the, if, if the PPI would have been devoid of political competitions, we would be somewhere discussing as sober human beings. All right. Advice. Recently, the Salaries and Remuneration Commission approved the car grants for members of the county assemblies. How people interpreted this approval is actually a, a subject for another day. But <laughs> 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 was it a sweet enough for them to pass the BBI? I'll take that one interpretation. Uh, the MCS for sure uh, uh, are required to have, it's their right to have that car grant. The problem is the timing. Because at the end of the day, perception in politics is very important. It is very difficult to make Kenyans believe that that was not a bribe. It is very difficult because of the timing in which it came. In as far as this is, uh, they, they, they are it's their right, they deserve it. But then at what time have you given it? Now that is what makes it become a uh, very suspect. And you asked whether we are losing the point in the BBI process and maybe the content of the process. And I wish to agree with you that we have actually already lost the point mm. because today, when you go out there and ask the person who is not supporting BBI why they don't support BBI, they will give you funny reasons. They will tell you, one, because the deputy president seems not to support it, 
two, they will tell you because it's not the right time. Those are not answers you give to a constitutional process. You ask those who are supporting the process of the BBI, and most of them support it because maybe Raila Odinga or President Kenyatta uh, supports it because it's been endorsed by so the it's government. Already so a it's already a polarized agenda. situation. And I wouldn't want us to say it's because it's been marred by politics, because politics in itself is not a bad thing. Mm. It is just because it has been marred by bad politics. Because again, when politics is full of ideals, then it helps the people. If we could be having politicians out there today going out with the document and telling Kenyans that we have something on the Youth Commission, and this Youth Commission, this is how it will be able to be of help. If they will be going out and saying we are going to add 70 seats, and this is the reason why we want to add 70 seats, and those opposed to it would be going out with the same document and saying this document speaks of increased women representation. This is the reason we don't want increased women representation. Now, we could be helping Kenyans going to make a decision based on ideals and based on the reality of the content of the BBI. But I dare say, Yacheng, I dare say that even the politicians who are out there and shouting to the highest and the toppest of their voices, I dare say over 60% of them have not come in contact with that BBI document. I've spoken to many of these people, and you'll learn that they are only singing tune to who is their master. Those who are allied to the deputy president are singing only the tune of the deputy president. And that's why when the deputy president says we need a consensus, all of them sing that. Because they don't have any other idea, they don't have any other thing they believe in. It's just about what did the boss say. If he said we need a consensus, then that is the right thing to do. If the boss says we need to add two, two three things to the document, then that is the right thing to do. So even the politicians themselves are devoid of the reality of the content of the document. And therefore it is very difficult for them to then spur uh, the, 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 the learning of this to the people. And I also wish to blame the BBI task force in itself because they have not done a sufficient sensitization on the content of the BBI, which is purely their mandate. So we are going to run into a situation where as a country, we are going to have a referendum, yes, but then we are not going to have a referendum where people are going to make decisions based on the content of the BBI, mm -hmm. but they're going to make decisions based on political affiliation, and that's a sad, which is the wrong thing. And that's a sad standpoint, if you ask me, for coming up with a document that is going to chant the direction for generations to come. Remember, this constitution is not just for today. This exactly. is something that will take many years. It will, it will shape the history of this particular country. So it's sad if you gentlemen are telling me this morning that we can actually we risk making that decision based on our political standpoints not on the issues contained in this particular document but allow me also get the perspective of hamisi on this subject hamisi the bill is currently being debated across the counties and you're seeing what is shaping up in our national politics baringo county became the first county to shoot it down I don't know what your advice would be. What is it that should shape the debate across the counties going forward so that Mwanainchi and the common Wanjiku does not lose in this particular arrangement? One of the things I want to say here, we have not lost the game. Uh, we have had some, there are uh, hurdles on the way of these changes that we have, but we have not lost the game yet. Uh, remember, I was also very, very close student of following the Guy report, the WACO report, the, and this latest year up to 20, uh, Constitution 2020. It was hotter. The debate was even crazier. But Kenyans are so good and so happy, they came through it. And I think we shall come through this one. Let's see how many countries will approve the, this document. And if they do, what happens? Uh, let's see uh, uh, if we shall be able to either go to, to the referendum or not. But still, finally, I believe Kenyans will come through, and some of these changes are so good when you look at uh, the financing of the county government. I was one of the people uh, who immediately after 20, 2010 constitution uh, that believed there was something we could correct. But we said, well, you remember what we said? We know this is not foolproof, but let's pass it and then we shall revisit. I also want to say the same now here. I know it may not be foolproof for every person who is, who is looking at those nine points and the changes, but I think there is better, there's a bigger chunk which is also good for all of us 
uh, than to waste it with water. So why don't we pass this one and we know we, our process of coming back to the issues? Because if you remove the security, if you remove uh, the, uh, the uh, level ground for, for competition during elections, if you remove the financing for counties, if you remove the, the gender issue, if we don't pass them now, it will take a longer, longer, longer period for us to be able to do that. And what, we were, what I was going to say, we didn't uh, budget for the functions that were transferred to the county in, 20, in 2013. We didn't. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Hamid. Bigger budgets uh, remain with the national government in mm -hmm. line ministry. Okay, we seem to be losing Hamisi there, but we'll get, be getting back to him in just a bit. Um, I am the man you're looking for. That is none other than Dr. Mukisa Kitui, the former cabinet minister and uh, immediate former secretary general of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Yesterday, he launched his 2022 presidential bid and said that among the, the many things he wants to do for this particular country, he wants to bring a different kind of politics. I just want to get your quick comments, Hamisi. Let's just stay on you and, uh, you know, just give us your quick comments about um, the announcement by Dr. Mokisa Kitui that he wants to become the country's next president and he believes he actually has what it takes. Kenyans and we all qualify and we must all if you have a dream you must say it so that people can wait but the crowding is beginning right now we can see at least I know two governors who are, who are saying they are coming to, to, to be president now Dr. Mukisa Kitui we are seeing the crowd in western I'm looking at the uh, Honorable Mudavadi uh, Weta and uh, those others and then Mukisa inside and our politics, believe you me, they start from home. I don't want to call them tribal, but they start from home. How many uh, people are you uh, drawing from, from your home uh, into, into the field? Will it be coalition between Mudabadi and uh, Dr. Kitui? And that is Western. And you know, the scenario is very interesting. Look at Nyanza, nobody is coming up to say, I'm studying, uh, I'm, I'm studying to compete with Raila. I'm looking at uh, Rift Valley. I, uh, at least I know two people. But when you make the crowd bigger, it becomes merrier because it is democratic, but it becomes messy okay. it's from the beginning. This mud that is uh, thrown between uh, the top two will even become more beyond, uh, after BBI because okay. everybody so will much. be on the ground. So Have yes, it's democratic, but it's going to be quite messy because now if I have to be tribal, the Western people have to decide, is it uh, Dr. Kitui or is it uh, uh, Mwashimiwa MM? Because I'm told he's a front runner. It's okay, a challenge. Thank you so much, Hamisi. But we welcome, let's... Thank you so much, Hamisi, for that. And of course, I just also in the interest of fairness, allow Advice and Dr. Rotich to, uh, you know, give us their comments on this. It's time to get rid of toxic politics and work towards a great nation. Can we have that? And is Dr. Kitui uh, the <coughs> man that will give us this advice? Uh, I think the messaging, the messaging by Honorable Mohisa Kitui was very good. Uh, it was very promising. I listened to the whole of his speech and his interview thereafter. And you could be able to feel a person with a wide breadth of experience, which we must acknowledge and give it to him. That. Mohisa Kitui has a wide experience. He has served in, uh, in, uh, from student leadership. He has been a member of parliament. He has served in the Kenyan cabinet at very serious portfolio. I think during the times when the cabinet in Kenya was, was, was a full cabinet with a lot of respect than what it is today. And he has even served in the international space as the Secretary General of, uh, of UNCTAD. So I think in terms of experience, he has the right experience that maybe that maybe the country needs. But now when you come to political realities in Kenya, it starts being a very dicey card because... I don't know why I saw you go there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> because we, we, we you must... You would have speak surprised to the, to, me if you didn't, but, but go on. <laughs> we must speak to the political realities of the country. Okay. And the political reality in the country is, one, 
with uh, in as much as Daktari comes in with the politics of ideals, which which is very good. It's a very good backdrop because that is what we really advocate for. But when you look at the political scenario in, in, in the country today, how far will this be able to sell? Already, as uh, the, the, the first commentator, my brother, put it, already he boxed him into, into Western Kenya, as if uh, Mohisa Kitu is looking for the kingship of, of the region, although the presidency of this country. So in as much as he might have the correct uh, gravitas to lead a campaign and become president of this country, mm -hmm. but then political reality really works so, against him because so it then wants to make him look like, number one, you must be able to solicit and find a good backing from the Western region. Already in the Western region, already we have over four uh, political perceived kingpins. So he has a task of, first of all, unifying that before he even comes now to the national stage to tell people now, hey, here I am and I can be president. The politics of Kenya is very tribal and therefore, until you have a perceived backing of your region, will then Kenya think a lot about you? Because again, presidency is not about being an individual. It's about coalitions. And the only way Mohisa Kitu is going to form any formidable coalition is if he's be going to be able to put the whole of Western region behind him. And already there's a lot of talk about he doesn't understand the, the, what is the realities of the ground. He doesn't understand what really ails the Bonanchi because he has been away for far too long. But then how he plays his cards going forward is uh, then what decides uh, how it turns out, but uh, the launching of the campaign, I think it is welcome and it was good enough, the messaging was good, but then he has to come down and face the political reality of the country and know that this is Kenya, it's not the United States, and he has to really put his first foot forward. All right, well said. Dr. Rutich, as we are uh, bringing this conversation to a close, advice says <laughs> there is the ideal, but now there is the politics. What do you say? <laughs> I think I want to say it is not, it is, uh, not deniable that uh, Mukisa Kitui has a wealth of uh, experience in the management of the economy of the country. Because I, I listened to him yesterday when he was elaborating about his vision about this country. And I, I looked at him and I was almost asking myself, I wish Mukisa Kitui was in one of the places within the European uh, countries whereby his way of doing things would be put easily. Because looking at him, uh, Acheng, politics is about perceptions. And already Mukisa Gidu is entering into a race where others have started long time ago. You talk about the right Honorable Braila, you talk about uh, Dr. William Ruto. They have been in the race for over three or four years down the line. Mm -hmm. And somebody now is joining the race. When will he have time to popularize himself or make himself known to the Kenyans? How many people will? In fact, this guy reminds me of uh, this uh, professor called Ole, Ole Kayapi, mm -hmm. who actually stood and he went around the country. He was a professor with, uh, ended with all experiences. But how many people listened to him? So the, the, the whole scenario look elitist in, in, in approach, and it may not really go very well. He may need time to entice and then inform Kenyans that he is better off than those who are already there. All it right. will be very difficult, a very difficult task to do. Thank you so much, Dr. Rotich. <laughs> you ask what time will he have to go around the country to popularize himself? A day in politics? <laughs> Is a very long time. <laughs> you, may just never know what will, you may just never know what will happen in the few coming days. But thank you so much, gentlemen, for creating time for us. In politics, it's never over. We can always just pick up this conversation and move on in another session. Advice Mundalo, a governance expert and a leadership expert as well. Dr. Joseph Rotich, political and economic expert. I was also engaging Hamisi Mboga from Mombasa, a governance and leadership expert. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for creating time for us this particular morning.